Hey there, GKR fans. Now, this is Vim Fuego, also known as the Nerf Mancer. Uh, I've got a little painting project which you might enjoy. Uh, so, with the game uh, on Kickstarter, we got some stretch goal exclusives, uh, namely these molded card trays. So I'm going to show you a way of uh, painting these up with a little bit of battle damage and of course team colors and uh, we're going to make these things look super cool. And of course this is a paint technique which I've used with great success on a whole range of Nerf guns. You might have seen these before. So what we're going to be doing today is replicating this look with the rust and of course the chip paint around all the edges and so on. And yeah, it's a very simple technique. Uh, you can whip this out in, uh, in a weekend, in the space of a weekend. Uh, if you really know what you're doing and your paint's drying really well, you could probably do this in under a day. So let's get started. Okay, so. To begin with, you're going to need a flat red primer. I use the Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch 2X Ultra Cover flat red primer. Um, this is great stuff, it goes on really nicely. So that's the first thing you're gonna do. Now remember, you're gonna be using lots of thin coats, not one heavy coat. And especially in the slots, you're gonna wanna go over those several times lots of thin coats to get the paint down inside those slots if you try to do this all in one go it's going to go on too heavy you're just going to end up with a big splodgy mess and it's going to fill in those gaps you do not want that so remember lots of thin coats not one big heavy coat all right so flat red primer that's your rust base and that gives you that nice red rust look the, uh, the rest of the layers over. Okay, so once you've got your, uh, your red down, which I have done already, next secret ingredient is sea salt. Now this is a coarse sea salt. As you can see there, it's uh, almost like rock salt. Uh, it is rock salt, so that's a little bit too heavy for what we're gonna be doing here today. So what I've done is I've got a pepper mill um, a grinder and I've put the rock salt in it and I've ground that down to this consistency which uh, it's a little coarser than table salt you don't want to use table salt it's too regular this sort of uh, gives us a nice range of sizes and textures so uh, avoid the table salt we go for the ground rock salt for, uh, for a little more randomness. Okay, once you've got your salt, you're going to want a metallic layer. Now, the metallic layer I've decided to use is the Dulux Duramax stainless steel finish. Uh, now, I've used this stuff before, it's quite good. Uh, dries rock hard, you don't have to worry about it scratching or chipping. Um, so that will provide you with a really good durable finish um, so you're going to need some of that the next thing you'll need after the metallic is a Winsor & Newton colourless art masking fluid this is basically liquid latex okay um, and that's going to be our mask for the paint chipping so once that's down, you then want your team colours. Now, coincidentally, Rust-Oleum does, in their basic range of colours, all of the team colours. Here is the uh, brilliant blue for the Thunder Happy team. Then we've got Meadow Green for Hammer Strike. We've got Gloss Marigold for, uh, for Diamond Back. And finally, Gloss Real Orange for King Wolf. Um, 
Now, I don't know whether it was coincidence or not, but those are the four colors that we're gonna be using for our faction colors. Now, that's basically all you need um, for this particular paint effect. There are some optional extras which you can also use. One of which is a flat black wash. And for that I use Tamiya Flat Black uh, mixed 50-50 with the X20A thinner. Now that's an acrylic thinner, it's not turpentine. Uh, this is a white spirit, uh, similar to methylated spirits but without the colour in it. Um, also similar to isopropyl alcohol and that's going to mix in with the Tamiya acrylic flat black. Um, now you'll use uh, a 50-50 as I say but if it does go on a little bit too heavy you'll be able to put some of the thinner on a rag and use that to wipe away the excess which you don't need. The most important thing about using the acrylic is that it won't disturb the enamel paint underneath. Um, you can be quite liberal with this and your enamel paint isn't going to go anywhere. The other thing you can use uh, to enhance your rust is a little bit of rust streak or streaking grime um, or both. Um, I use the AK um, interactive paints. These are enamel so you've got to be careful they will mess with the enamel underneath if it's not dried properly. Even when it is dry if you go too heavy with it there's still a danger that it could disturb that enamel paint underneath so watch out for that. And the last thing or well, the second to last thing I should say I'll be doing is adding a little bit of dry brushing with the Tamiya flat enamels. So I've got one for each of the factions here. Blue, red, and uh, I'm going to have to mix the red and yellow to get the orange of course for King Wolf and I'm going to add a little bit of white to the flat blue uh, just um, because the blue by itself is a little bit darker than the uh, Rust-Oleum blue. So uh, and last but not least, remember of course that these are all optional extras. The very last thing I'm going to do is add some of Mum's Spice Rack. So here we have ground cayenne pepper, ground cinnamon, ground paprika, and ground nutmeg. These are to add texture and a little bit of colour to the rust areas um, very sparingly uh, we don't want it all over our cards and everything so uh, but these just add that little bit of extra oomph to your rusted areas so that's everything you need in order to get started on this paint job remembering of course that everything you put on after the team colors is completely optional all right so uh, I'm going to cut the video here and uh, we'll get started. All right. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to lay down our salt mask. This is really simple. What we're going to do is just spray a spot of the flat red primer wherever we want the rust and then we're going to sprinkle the salt or drop the salt onto it while it's still wet and that will cause the salt to stick in place and it won't move around while we're doing the rest of the spray work. So that's our first step, let's get to it. Okay welcome to my spray booth. Now we've got our salt and we've got our flat red primer. So as I say we're just going to be putting spots of this onto the damaged areas where we want the rust to be showing through on the card tray and sprinkling salt onto it. So this is uh, easy peasy, just a little spot and 
sprinkle your salt where you want to see the rust coming through. Just sort of gently press it down a little bit and then shake the excess off. Once you've done that, you then go in a little bit of spray over the top of it, just very, very lightly, and that'll hold it nice and solid in place. For areas where you want a little more rust, you can, can of course go over the top of it again with a little more salt, and that will fill in the gaps. Give you a nice dense rusty hole. Of course we have a bit of a theme going here where this end of the board is nice and uh, online as it were um, and as we move down the board it gets more and more damaged so of course most of the rust is going to end up down this end so we're going to be concentrating mostly around this area with our salt mask. The other thing you might like to do is just tilt the tray slightly when you spray just to get up under those edges there and get the rust sticking nicely in those areas as well and once you're uh, once you have your as I say, just give it a quick squirt and that'll just work to hold it in place a little more and just work steadily in small areas over the entire tray until you get the desired effect. Okay, that's it for the salt masking. As you can see, the ones that I've done already are almost dry. As long as you don't go too heavy with the rust red, these will dry pretty rapidly. As soon as these are dry, and I'd say we only need to give this one another 30 minutes or so, uh, we'll be into the metallic paint. Okay, here we are with two coats of the stainless steel and we are looking very good. Um, it has literally been 10 minutes and this is already completely dry to the touch. So that's fantastic. It's gotten all the way into all of the small text and these little grooves everywhere and we didn't have to go heavy at all, literally two light coats and we are done. Uh, so even though it's dry right now, I'm going to leave it for another hour just to cure a little bit and then we'll come back and do the fun part which is demasking the salt mask. Alright, welcome to my kitchen. This is where we're going to be performing the next step in the process which is the removal of the salt mask. All you're going to need for this is an old toothbrush, nylon bristles and some warm water. Real simple, you can just start brushing away the salt. To reveal the rust underneath. Got it about this point, you can then just run it under warm water, and that will have the effect of dissolving the rest of the salt and leaving just the rust. Now, as I said, this metallic paint is incredibly hard wearing, so you don't have to be gentle with it at all. 
give it a good scrubbing. It can take it. As I demonstrate there, you can really give it a good scratch, you can ding it. That metallic paint is not going anywhere, so don't be afraid of getting in there and giving it a good scrubbing. Also, because it's enamel, it's completely waterproof, so you won't have to worry about the water disturbing the paint at all. It's just going to run straight off there. And just like that, finished. That is some nice looking rust. So all it needs now is a wipe down with clean, dry paper towel. Just take most of the water off there. And then you might want to give it an air dry for a wee while, somewhere warm. Just to take the rest of the water droplets away, the ones that you don't get out of the corners and such. And that's it. We're ready for the next step. Okay, this next step is definitely the most time consuming part of this whole process. We're now going to use the colourless masking fluid to mask off all of the rusted areas and also we're going to run it down the edges where wear has, uh, has chipped the paint off. Uh, so open this up and we're going to decant it into a uh, slightly more accessible pot. Just hope we're going to have enough to get through for these cartridges. I don't want to run out part way through. Now if you have an old brush uh, can sacrifice that if you like, um, but I, well, I'm through sacrificing brushes to this stuff, so uh, I use a piece of normal kitchen sponge which I've cut down to a point with scissors. Simply dip that in there and start dabbing that around. Now you want to hit all of the large rust areas first. Um, this will just spread it around as quickly as you possibly can. It does dry quite quickly so you want to get it into all of those corners as quick as possible. methodically and as quickly as you possibly can. Last thing you want to do is go around all the edges, and this is 
basically gonna make it so that your uh, edges look worn down. Normally get this kind of effect through dry brushing which can look a little bit fake sometimes especially when you want your metallic colors to look quite solid and just run it down the edge move it in a little bit from time to time and especially each where the slider goes Okay, the liquid latex mask has dried and uh, you can tell because it's gone completely transparent. As you can see, you can see it at certain angles in the light. So we've gone and got as many of those rust spots as we can, just roughly around them and uh, all of the edges as well. To the right angle, there we go. Be careful about uh, how, you, how much you touch them because that liquid latex can come off on your fingers very easily. So all we need to do now is spray each one in its faction color. So I'm gonna go away and do that now. Okay, so here's where we're at right now. We've got the faction colors down on the card trays. The orange, yellow, and green have worked really well. Slight problem with the blue. I think it's come out of the can a little bit hot and has dried slightly before hitting the surface, so it's left a bit of a stipple pattern. Um, this isn't too much of a problem. Um, something that we can look at fixing during the dry brushing stage. Um, and possibly uh, a clear coat at the end uh, may fix it too. Um, but not worrying about that too much right now. We're just gonna let these dry until the tackiness has gone from the paint. Um, we don't want them to cure completely before we take off the liquid mask um, as that will prove to be a little more difficult. Uh, we just want it to be dry but still soft and uh, that will be a perfect time to take away that liquid latex um, so it's just the waiting game now I'll be back soon okay so at the point now where the uh, paint is fully dry to the touch. It's still just a wee bit soft, so this is the perfect time to start stripping off that liquid mask. So what I'm going to use for this is a combination of my fingernails, a sharp stick, uh, in this case is uh, a um, a chopstick which I've sharpened to a point and also a toothbrush and this is just to sort of sweep away the excess bits as they come off and all you need to do is just take the edge of the stick and work it 
forcefully backwards and forwards across the surface. Wherever paint starts to peel away, just work out in those areas to reveal the metal and the rust underneath. work the tip of the stick into things like bullet holes and uh, cracks. Just pull that rubber out of Just like that. And also get right down into the slots as well. Remove the liquid mask. I was wrong in saying that the application of the liquid mask was uh, going to be the most arduous part of the process. In actual fact, the removal of the liquid mask was far more arduous. Um, not to worry, now we're looking a bit clean here, although you might notice that, especially on the green one. Scraping away the liquid mask has uh, dulled the surface quite a lot, but that's not a problem because what we're going to do now is apply a black wash in order to get this effect. And this is what our uh, end result is, uh, is going to be. So that's going to hide a lot of the imperfections in the paintwork and also just uh, give it a little more depth and texture and hide some of these uh, scratches and stuff that we, uh, that we got when we removed the liquid mask. Um, so make sure that you've got as much of that rubber out of there as possible. if it comes away after you've applied the, the wash it'll leave super clean spots and, uh, and so forth so be as thorough as you can all right so for this stage uh, so we're going to use our thinner and our tummy matte black and uh, we're just going to thin that down until we've got a 50 50 sort of um, 50-50 wash and then what you're going to do is go over it the entire thing very quickly very roughly and just splash that on there make sure we get down into all the cracks and crevices first and, uh, go as heavy as you like don't worry about it drying before you get to wipe it away. I'll show you why in a second. I'm just going to do this really quickly. and just wipe it all away like that just roughly and then what I'm gonna want to do is take a 
isopropyl or uh, the offenders in this case. So we want to put a little bit of that into a container and then take a clean spot on your rag somewhere. Put your finger in there and then just polish out the main areas. So, yeah, simple as that. Um, you can go back in, do another coat if you wish. Bring those shadows up even more, but uh, it's pretty good. I'm happy with that. Uh, so I'm just going to do the others now, and uh, yeah, we'll come back and uh, do some uh, rust touch-ups. Okay, so now that we've got our black wash down on all of our car trays, the uh, next. that you might want to take and this is not compulsory at all um, but uh, you might want to just accentuate some of the rust um, especially with black wash wash it might have gone a little bit dull in some parts uh, especially on this board mm -hmm. so what I'm going to do is take my AK rust streaks give it a bit of a shake up ready and I'm also going to take my spices all right so this is nutmeg cinnamon and paprika now this step is going to get a little bit messy so remember put some paper down uh, or something um, okay so all you do is you take a semi-fine brush you kind of want to going to want a rag or a paper towel handy as well just to uh, sort of control where the rust goes and then we're going to just spot the rust where we want it to go roughly just give it a dab to soften those edges back a bit build it up again in the center and then while it's while it's still wet, I'm going to take some nutmeg, sprinkle that on there, and a little bit of cinnamon, sprinkle that in there. And finally, tap around a little bit of paprika, and that's just going to just a touch. Tap it down, tap it off, and boom, we've got some nice textural rust happening there. Let's get it into the light properly. See that? So yeah, it gives a nice sort of dry, flat look as well. So I'm just gonna wanna go through, keep doing that in all of these areas. general gentle wipe like that will move it away from the, uh, the surface so that it only appears down the bottom of crevices and cracks and so forth. Here's your finger. Just pull it away from 
some of the areas, make it look more regular. But yeah, that's as easy as that. Uh, so just, yeah, continue working around the area until you've uh, got rust anywhere you sort of feel it needs more rust and, uh, and that's it. That's all you need to do. So I'll do uh, the rest of the boards and then I'll come back and uh, show you how they all turned out. Alright, so I've uh, got my spices down just as a little addendum before I go away and clear coat these. Uh, I've decided to leave the bullet holes as is and just explain them why as old bullet holes. Yeah, that's why they're rusty. The thing I'm doing is just going around any areas that sort of look a little bit too spicy and just rubbing my fingers over the edges to move the spice away off the surfaces and stuff because the, uh, the grainy stuff really only appears in the deep crevices and, and stuff similar to the washers so I'm just moving them back just using my finger to brush them away from the flat surfaces for the most part anyway just gently especially on this green board it's very sort of uh, high contrast looking so just to uh, soften that look a little bit I'm just carefully going around all the edges and just moving them back in the lighting is terrible my apologies for that I'm going to have to get some studio lights or something or something So that is ready for a bit of clear coat. And that will snap those spices into place and keep them there. A little bit, well it's a bit dark, it means it's still wet, so just uh, give it a few minutes for those bits to dry before you start attacking them with the clear coat. I recommend a flat clear coat if you have one uh, otherwise you get shiny rust and that just looks kind of weird okay well that about does it I clear coated these now so the spices should stick around they will wear off in some of the more exposed areas still but they are going to stick around in the uh, crevices and the cracks and uh, what have you so that's the main thing um, there are a few other steps that you could take, um, such as um, highlighting the Heavy Hitters logo in a slightly lighter shade of the faction colour if you like. Uh, you could even fill in the numbers and lettering with a different colour. Um, or you could uh, even not do as many steps as I've done here and just uh, simplify it a little bit if you like. Um, it's really up to you. But I hope you found something in this tutorial that you can take away and apply to your own projects, whether it be car trays or Nerf guns. Um, that's, yeah, completely up to you. Have fun with it. And until next time, this is the Nerf Dancer, aka Vimfuego, signing off.